All right, now I'm gonna show you how to add some interactivity to your project. Before you do that, it's super important that you share your project. So there's a button up here that's orange and you click it and you'll come back to this page. Uh, the reason this is, is if you don't share it, then we're not gonna be able to check out this project because today in your exit ticket, you need to copy this URL, which is gonna be scratch.mit.edu slash projects slash some number. Um, you're going to copy that and you're going to paste that into your exit ticket today. But the rest of this video is uh, really optional. If you'd like to add some interactivity to your project, that's great. Um, this is what this is all about. But if you're still working on getting your uh, virtual field trip going or just, you know, the basics of your code going, you don't have to do this. This is purely optional. So with that being said, here are a couple of things I did to add interactivity. One is I got the um, my serpent moving, um, and that's pretty easy. I can do that with the when a key is pressed, um, this right here. And the way sprites move in Scratch is long. They go right and left along the x axis, and up and down along the y axis. So in motion, I can drag out, change x by and change y by. So for the up arrow, I change Y by positive 10. Down arrow, I change Y by negative 10. Right arrow, I change Y by, oops, sorry, not Y, X. X by positive 10. And left arrow, X by negative 10. And that's how you get this movement. All right. And then the other thing I thought I'd do is since we're moving around, why don't I have um, the user move my sprite to the next thing it's going to visit? So I need to create another sprite that I can bump into. I'm going to find a star. Okay, and actually I want that to be pretty small. I don't want it to be like a super obvious thing to find. Um, that's pretty small. Let's see if I can grab it. Oh, I can. Okay, so it's near the observatory now. So when I move this, I should be able to bump into it. So I need to add some code for that. Um, this is called a condition. If I touch another sprite, then something's going to happen. So I need um, an if, and I need to put that if in a forever because I need it to be checking this condition for the whole time. And then I need to check uh, sensing things. So I'm going to sense if I touch another sprite. So if I touch star, Change that to stop. Welcome Oops. to Teach nope. and I don't want to do that. I am your tour guide, Equinox. Yes, I know. That's what I need. Star. Okay, and then I want it to something to happen. And the thing I want to happen is I want it to switch to backdrop observatory. All right, let's check that out. Welcome to Teach and Itza. I am your tour guide, Equinox Serpent. Let's go visit the observatory. Use the arrow keys to get me there. Okay, so I'm going to take the arrow. Oh, yeah, something bizarre is happening. So one thing I need to happen is I need this star to go away when I get to this next thing. So remember, just like all our other sprites, we need a hide condition and a show condition. So I'm going to bring out my show and my hide. And in this case, when the flag is clicked, I want it to show and when I get to the observatory, I want it to hide. Let's see if that Welcome fixes. to Teach and Itza. I am your tour guide, Equinox Serpent. Let's go visit the observatory. Use the arrow keys to get me there. Okay. Hello. Bam. All right. So obviously I would need to fix the rest of my backdrops to, like I might want the serpent to come back down here when um, it's in this. And again, I can just do that right here. Uh, that's its location right now. So when it switches to observatory, I can have it go back to the bottom. So again, this part is totally optional. It doesn't need to be part of your project, but if you wanted to add some interactivity, here are some ideas. Good luck.